What else do consumers need to know, whether it's about Singular or box warnings or anything like that? What is it that, what's the big takeaway from an episode like this? You know, I think for me, it still comes down to, it's just such a tendency all the time, but especially nowadays that uh, this drug is bad. This drug is evil. The FDA is bad. The FDA is great. And you're, you're in this box of one or the other. And I think to me, I keep coming back to the fluidity of this. Yeah. If you're on these drugs, um, you put it on the scale and you balance in terms of what you're using it for, what the side effects could be. Be aware though, advocate for yourself, be aware, it, at least, especially with those black box, black box warnings, just be aware of what's out there, your history propensity, and just be aware of them. To me, that's, that's really the main thing. And again, and back to the FDA thing is just to maintain the fluidity that, that they can not be in a position to defend what they approved or what they initially labeled, but that they are, they are motivated to change them when warranted. That makes and sense. in doing that, it's going, it requires doctors, pharmacists, patients to report these events so that when they could see groups of them and big pockets of them, that something can actually be done about it. If they don't know, the FDA doesn't know, they can't do anything. Right, right. That makes a lot of sense. So the informed consumer is the punchline. Mm -hmm. um, you have to take control of, take responsibility for your own health. Mm -hmm. it, it, it really is a tough communication balance to strike you know, between the person who's a p potential candidate for the medication like this and the provider, you know, you walk into the office and they're discussing this potential option with you. And it's, Hey, this is a really, this is a really good option. Yeah. You know, this helps a ton of people with symptoms and no more inhaled steroids. Like you can just try one of these and you're good. Um, and then all of a sudden they say, but there's <laughs> yeah. this black box warning, you yeah. know? So and it has this scary appeal. So it's the, the clinician is also not trying to scare or deter somebody from pursuing an option. It's how do you put that out there without it, you know, on the flip side, scaring you from, from doing literally anything. So right. it is tough. Maybe there's an issue with the language of box warnings and black box warnings that has seemingly emerged over time. Maybe that, maybe that's a, an issue, but um, to sort of crystallize that thought, I would say that, you know, when you leave the pharmacy and you're picking up a medication for the first time for yourself or for your kid, the, the proclivity is to just throw those papers away that, you know, list the hundreds of side effects. I and, have done that. And all the issues, which again is completely normal. It feels yeah. like, a, it feels like a waste of paper for us half the time, unfortunately yeah. course, in the pharmacy. Yeah. But, but again, when it's your first time, your first couple times, look for that black box, look for the box warnings, have a feel for some of those more glaring issues. You don't have to read the entire thing cover to cover. Cause a lot of it is overkill. It's like the, you know, the commercial thing where there's all the it lists, all these things. And yeah. Yeah. Um, but again, just have a, have a feel for some of these, you know, larger issues. Again, what we say there's, there's over 400 medications with box warnings. You're not going to be an expert on all 400 of those, right. but again, I'm sure there's somebody in your family that there's maybe a total of 10 meds that you might have a familiarity with as far as some of these warnings. Sure. Go. It's just maybe a, a cluing somebody to just pay a little more attention to those things. And for us too. And if you're from a counseling standpoint, is, yeah. you know, if it's for a, a minor, mm -hmm. you should definitely ask if there's anything you should be watching out for, because as an adult, hopefully you'll notice, Hey, I just started taking this medicine and now I'm having really weird dreams. I wonder if those are associated. Yeah, mm -hmm. you'll probably figure that out. But with a child, they may not have any way to, to communicate. Exactly. That. And I, Dante brought up a great point, I think, is the communication with your pharmacist, with your doctor about this. Because, again, we're still mainly concerned about this, mainly in children, in adolescents. What's occurring in children and adolescents? Mood changes. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so you're looking at depression, anxiety, <clears throat> sleep disturbances, suicidal thoughts in a population that's, Sounds that's like, changing yeah, uh, go, like crazy. So now, again, you're going to have everybody, I'm on singular, these things are occurring. Well, let's really try to talk about what's going on potentially right. that maybe it's not related to singular. But yeah. that's what, again, on a national perspective, when these things are being properly reported then hopefully people who can better evaluate these things on a, on a large scale can maybe kind of pin down where, where this is coming from. But the yeah. communication is critical. That's a great point. Yeah. That makes I mean, a lot of nearly, sense. Nearly, I 
I glossed over this. Nearly 20% of children aged three through 17 have a mental, emotional, developmental, or behavioral condition. And of those children, 40% do not receive treatment or counseling. And so you're what we're talking about again to, wow. to real to really hammer this home is that we're already dealing with a population quite susceptible to these issues. And it's worth paying the extra attention to what's maybe in your med guide. For yes. sure. And still communicating mm-hmm. properly. Cause again, 20% are dealing with it. So now you're a mom or a dad and you get and you read this headline. My kid's on singular. Oh my God, this drug is getting back to what I said initially. This is a bad drug. This is a terrible drug. Get off this. This is right. horrible. Well, let's Let's take this piece by piece. What's going on where we can help our child with both of these things without necessarily throwing the baby out with the bathwater, getting rid of the singular Mm -hmm. for something that may not be causing it. So informed consumer, just Mm -hmm. be aware, know your situation, talk to your doctor, talk to your pharmacist. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. sense. Informed decisions. It's almost as if that's how this show all started (laughs) (laughs) with, with senior.